Hey, it's Shane with New Mexico Pack Burrows, and one of the biggest questions I get is about what to do with your animals, what to do with your burrows at the trailhead or when you're in the backcountry camping. So today we're going to set up, or at least show you three different ways you can do it with hobbles, an electric fence, and then um, a high line as well. So we'll start with the electric fence. But I think one thing to keep in mind throughout this whole video, and we'll just get it out of the way, is that make sure you train with all this stuff at home first. Introducing your burrow or your horse or your mule to an electric fence for the first time at your backcountry camp uh, is not a good way to make it, a, make it a happy experience. So if you can, two, three times at home before you go on your first trip, practice this stuff. So. Uh, when they're, so they're familiar with it. There's nothing new on race day or there's nothing new uh, on trail day and you'll be good to go. So I'm going to set this up real quick to kind of show you how I set it up. Uh, I'll speed through it to make it go a little faster, but setting up a electric fence is super simple. It can seem kind of complex and daunting at first, but it's a really easy system. It's pretty much only got uh, three, four parts to it. So the first part is the poles, obviously. I get these from uh, Tractor Supply, Big R, whatever your local farm and ranch home supply store is, mom and pop shop, whatever. And all they are is little plastic posts. I've got them, I've got them tied up here. This is how I pack them on the trail. I'll show you in a moment, but I've cut off about about a foot of it um, because one, the burrows don't need that extra height from the fence and two, this fits perfectly across their back um, horizontally or perpendicular to how, how you have the saddle. So when it sits on the saddle, the saw bucks right here, one pannier here, one pannier here and it perfectly fits on top. So these are just a couple of straps from, I don't know, whatever store. Get them untied here. And this keeps it keeps everything together. Um, I used to put them in a pannier um, or try to just put them on. I've done a bunch of different stuff. I've duct taped these together. I'm still trying to find the best system. Hopefully later this winter I'll have my ultralight setup done um, for a cool project we're gonna do this summer. I'm gonna build some some fiberglass poles that break down like a tent pole and uh, should be kind of a neat a neat thing but for now this is what I've done for the last five years again it's a variety of different just step in electric posts they're like two three bucks at your your tack your hardware store and uh, I've cut I've cut essentially the top rung off off the top here you know when you buy them they're like this long and I just cut it off with a with a saw a couple of things to keep in mind when setting this up I usually carry 10 or 12 of these in the back country. Um, that makes a plenty big space. This is also the same electric fence setup I use when I go to races or I'm traveling with the burrows. Um, anything like that I prefer to, to use this setup rather than carry panels around or anything like that. But the one thing to keep in mind is that your corner posts are the most important posts. Those are the ones that are going to take, take the weight. Uh, when you're pulling that wire around like you'll see me here do here in a minute um, They're gonna be taking that that I guess that counter pull from your string So the ones that are in line with the corner, they're just kind of there to hold the string But anytime you have an angle and that wire is gonna be coming off the post at any sort of angle um, Make sure these ones are the the ones you take some time to make sure they're they're just firmly planted in the ground uh, because sometimes when I set this up, it's rocky, there's roots everywhere. Sometimes you only get them like an inch in the ground or whatever, especially when we're at races and maybe you're even setting up in, in an old parking lot at a fairground, that, that, is, that ground is super hard. So uh, just make sure your cor corner posts are good to go. So uh, let me grab the other couple of components and talk about them uh, with the electric fence before, here I, before I set it up. All right, so the other things that I take with me with the electric fence, obviously I have everything here 
in a little bundle. Um, but you're going to need a charger of some sort. So this is a D-cell charger. What I mean by that, it just runs on four D batteries here. And those D batteries I replace once a year. I've ran, I've ran easy, ran this for a year on different trips in the yard um, and never had a problem with the batteries dying. It's got two different modes, rabbit and turtle. So I think uh, rabbit's like a, is, a, is a pulse every one second. And then the turtle is like every three seconds. So I don't get too worried about batteries. Sometimes I, I even forget to turn it on. My animals are really broke to this now and they don't really test the wire much. But several different brands. Patriot, I think is the big R brand. Uh, Tractor Supply is maybe like Speedrite or something like that. Gallagher is a really good brand. They all run $80, $90 and uh, all do about the same thing. With these, you've got two different, two different cords that come out of here. The green is the ground, so that's going to go on your ground rod. Uh, this is just a piece of metal, nothing fancy. You can use a piece of rebar, a piece of aluminum, um, whatever you have laying around. Uh, the one I use at home, I think it's just some sort of metal rod I found at Tractor Supply. So nothing real complex. It doesn't even really need to be this big. Um, the important part is that it's conductive and uh, you get good contact with the dirt. You can pour a little bit of water. Um, when you pound this in, uh, a little bit of water, that increases the conductivity. But So this, you'll see me pow, 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 pound this in and connect the ground to it. Um, and then you're going to connect this other one to the, uh, to the wire itself on the electric fence. Um, and essentially what it's doing is this is a positive connection to, to your wire. Um, and then when your animal touches the wire, your animal becomes the ground and makes that snap. So um, pretty simple system. The only other part to this is wire. Uh, this is just whatever braided wire they had, um, braided rope wire, I guess. There's a polyester um, rope in here mixed in with the, the metal wire. This is a, I don't know, just a wire reel I found, real handy. Um, and the setup I'm getting ready to make, we're gonna, uh, I'm, I've got some, found some different wire reels that work really well, aren't quite as clunky as this. I never use this much, this much cordage um, when I'm in the back country. It's definitely overkill. If I, sometimes when I've got, wanted, to, wanted to go real light, I've even taken a 12 inch uh, paint roller, like the real fuzzy um, paint roller part that goes over the roller to paint your house um, and wrapped a bunch of wire on that. And that works pretty well. So um, yeah, posts, ground rod, rod, you got your charger and your wire. The only other thing I wanted to mention before I get start to get set up is something I started doing last year. I started taking taking these screw-in clips, and I'll try to show a, a magnified view of what this is. But these are it's a screw on one end and an insulator on the other. So what I'll do is um, a lot of times in southern Colorado, there's a lot of beetle kill or dead trees, uh, and it's inevitable. You ideally don't want to keep your burrows around dead trees, but they're everywhere up there. So um, I'll screw these into some, some trees, some dead trees, and that'll allow me to make my electric fence system quite a bit bigger. Because essentially, you put two of these on a tree, and you have yourself an extra post, and you didn't have to carry it in. So I bring, on, bring around a little baggie of those. Uh, this has allowed us to remain in one camp area really easily for three, four days without having to move the burrows because we can give them bigger access to grass. It can have all the good stuff. It can, they can have shelter, wind protection, all those things I'll talk about, I think, after I set up, set up uh, my fence. Uh, but you can make your system a lot bigger for just a couple of bucks and really not much weight. So I will get to setting up the fence here and uh, kind of show you how it's done. So step one, go put your posts out. 
One thing I like to do is I start off by putting two posts right next to each other. That's going to make your door, uh, or at least a gate, excuse me. Um, I'll show you how to do that quickly here. I'm going to just do a small area here. Uh, I usually at least have 10 or 12 feet between posts to capitalize uh, my post use. So. So next, I'm gonna put my, start my string, um, try to keep tension on it, and I'm gonna start with my gate here. So first thing I'm gonna do, uh, the camera might kinda cut it off, but I'm gonna go over to my next corner, my next post here, and I'm gonna add a little loop and stuff to, to the, uh, the peg on this post. So I'm gonna just kinda wrap it around, whatever that's so when I move this one because this is my gate it, the whole fence doesn't get slack so um, I'll kind of hard tie it off to that post and then continue around all the way back over here I usually do the top string first I'll come down give this Give this one an extra loop. Come down, give this one an extra loop. That kind of keeps my, keeps my tension and then I'll go back and do the bottom wire. So this is my gate now, right? And because I tied it off on that post, I can, Lose a little bit of tension, but not much. But then it's open and I can put my burrows in there, which I'll do here in a second. A um, couple of tips. So when you're setting up, when you're setting up uh, your, your fence or your high line, um, you wanna take note of how much grass you've got in there if you're gonna have to move it after a day or two. You want, ideally if it's sunny, you wanna give them some shade. Uh, you wanna have wind protection. It can rain on them, it can snow on them, um, but what you don't want is uh, wet and wind. So um, wind protection is a must when picking out a spot and they're good to go. So there's not much grass in here. Um, they might have a, have a, you know, maybe one or two feedings worth in there, but definitely need to find a better spot. All right, last thing I do is I uh, put in my ground rod. So I've got a hatchet here. Um, next, add my charger, connect it to my ground here, turn that on, and then I connect it to uh, my fence. <clears throat> um, and it's hot, it's good to go. Make sure there's no grass or sticks or leaves on the, uh, the wire itself. And then I can move this gate without touching any of this stuff. Um, obviously, I turn it off when I move my gate, so that's it. Um, just make sure you add weather, or make sure you find a nice spot with weather protection. Um, I typically carry a small portable bucket that I'll show you. So I put in, this is a Sea to Summit kitchen sink. But I'll go fill this at a creek or nearby water. It's a pretty big bucket. Um, they generally don't spill it. I'll stick it in there with them. And they're good, they're good for a long time. So um, I might give them a little bit of grain in the morning and the evening. Um, that just kind of keeps them happy and in camp and uh, gives them a little bit of the nutrients and minerals they might be missing from the, from the grass. And that's it. So hobbles are pretty simple. Uh, these, I'll put the link in the description below, but essentially it's just two pieces of, or I guess two, Two pieces of nylon or leather. Come back here. Two pieces of nylon or leather um, attached together. I like these for the burrows because they've got uh, they've got a strap here 
that uh, you can adjust the, the width in between them. So those work well. Uh, and you just put them on. This is best when you can train at home. Um, put them somewhere where they're not going to flip over and hurt themselves. Uh, they got plenty of room. Uh, first time I put them on Comet, he just kind of laid down and fell over. Um, but I did it at feeding time, so they're kind of distracted. They learn how to move around in them. And when I feed with hobbles, uh, usually my, my go-to setup is I bring the fence and the hobbles everywhere I go um, in the back country. The fence is super easy, but sometimes I'm at camp. I want to let them wander around, get some more exercise. They're sick of being in the, the fence. Um, so I bring the hobbles. And generally, I mean, how do you know they get enough feed? So usually it takes about an hour and a half with decent grass around and they'll start to wander. They're, they'll start to take, you know, three, four, 10 steps in between mouthfuls. Um, and by then they're pretty well full. When, when they're just you know, kind of like she was doing here, when they're just taking a half step in eating or not even moving at all in eating, like they're hungry, they're, they're, getting, their, they're getting their fill, um, but usually takes about an hour, hour and a half. So I don't leave them unattended hobbled um i've taken a nap and fallen asleep and woken up an hour later and they're at, you know they're three four hundred yards down the trail so i don't do that overnight i keep them in the the electric fence and then when i'm gone hunting or fishing they stay in the electric fence and i haven't had a problem so i but i do take the hobbles and fence everywhere i go next we'll do we'll do the highline setup uh there's a couple different ways to do it, and it's something that I use uh, once in a while still. So finally, the, the one that I started out using a lot, I used to just use hobbles and a high line. So they would be high line when I'd be gone from camp or overnight, and then I'd let them out with the hobbles to feed at day. That's tough to do when you're hunting because you want to be out and about pretty much all day, um, and you don't want to be devoting three, four hours at, at camp watching your animals eat and whatnot. So I went more, I used the electric fence system way more. Um, the electric fence system too is a bigger area. You have less of an impact. It's harder. You still can tell there's been animals there, but the high line, the high line because they're pacing back and forth in a small area or moving around, it tears up the ground quite a bit. Um, but it's good, for, it's good for new animals in the back country because they're super secured. Uh, thunderstorms, stuff like that. Uh, it's just high security with it. So some folks like to use it. The first thing I'll show you is this Highline kit. They run about a hundred bucks. There's a few different people that make them, but it's real simple. So what's in here is some rope. Um, I've got the end here. It's just rope and a couple of knot savers. And so you've got your rope. And what I'm going to use today is a lot of times these come with tree savers. What a tree saver is, is just a piece of nylon like this. Um, and you can stick the ends together. And this part goes around the trunk. I like to use the cinches because I already have them. Um, they're quite, the tree savers are quite a bit bigger, which is going to be, which would be super nice for these big, bigger trees here. Um, but you can use other stuff like cinches. You can use your lash rope, uh, work well. Um, when I say cinches, I mean these lash cinches. You don't want to use your cinches from your saddle because you're going to get bark and crud on them. Um, but I like to use these. So to set it up, it's pretty simple. We'll just grab the rope, grab our cinch. And the point of using a tree saver is so you don't have this rope wrapped around this tree and it, it messes up the bark and girdles and kills the tree. So we'll just show you this. Put it a little above, a little above head high. This is a bit short. I've got the rope on the tree, which is not ideal. I could take another one of my cinches or the tree saver straps that are usually in there, which I just forgot them today. Uh, but for sake of showing you, we'll just do this. Come over to this tree. Holy cow, this is a big tree. Yeah. Then 
you just tie it off. There's a hundred ways to do it. 99 of them are right. XX cord, these come with a bag, which is super nice. You can just stick it all in here. And that's pretty much all that's to it. So then you have your, you have your high line. You, this can be 30 feet long if you want it to be. I use these knot savers. I'll put a link, um, a link in a, in a picture of them, but it just saves you from tying on the, uh, the high line. There's a breakaway on here um, in case something happens that can snap off. All right, so we got our high line set up here. Um, I put the, I kind of messed up the knot, so I just cut away and fixed it. Uh, but so we've got a knot eliminator here, super handy. Just gives you a nice little loop. There's some different loops you can do in here. Um, this one has a swivel. This one here does not. Uh, they're super cheap, nice to use. And what things you want to consider is if I have two animals on here, I don't want to have them so close that they can get all wrapped up as well as how much lead you give them. So this has a lot of play in it. So if they want to reach down and maybe grab a couple pieces of grass or lay down, usually they can do that. Um, usually they can do that pretty easily. Um, but I like to have the, usually about this much. What you don't want is too much where they can get a leg over it. So. He can still move around here. Come on, come it. There we go. Come over here a little more. I know. The tree in the way. So he can move around quite a bit. He's super secure here. Um, he's not going to go anywhere. He can lay down. There's enough. There's enough lead rope here where he can lay down. So this is pretty much a high line. Um, like I said, I use the fence more often than not now. Uh, but I did start out using this quite a bit, this paired with a set of hobbles to allow them to graze. So that's it for today's video. Uh, let me know what questions you have. Subscribe, send this to somebody. Um, if I miss something, I love a good critique. So let me know um, what you'd like to hear next and we'll rock and roll and do some more cool videos.